Checking hair. Checking hair. Nice. Looking at camera. New setup. <laughs> like the looks. Uh, yeah, your lipstick is better than mine, but that's uh, that's very good. G'day, everyone, and welcome uh, to a Tuesday evening chat here at the Oak Barrel back room. Um, we are going to be talking about Glendronach um, tonight in the latest of our little whiskey and spirit sojourns. Um, I have to my right, to your left, uh, the brilliant Talita Alves to come along with me tonight. All right. Well, how, how are you? Very good to be here. Uh, I was actually at home uh, working in pajamas all day, so I'm very happy to be here because, well, it gave me a reason to dress up, put a bit of lipstick on, and then so good to the bed these days, isn't it? We've had that comment a bit in the last sort of three months that often the Oak Barrel live stream is the only reason people are putting pants on uh, all day or washing their hair or doing whatever they need to do. Oh, look at this. They're so luscious. I'm very impressed with my hair. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so what we have uh, today, and this is actually for some of the people who have been on the live streams before, this is a new setup. For us um, so hopefully we're not getting too much echo but please uh, let us know if we are uh, if we are having any internet or sound issues we can we can try and solve them but we're actually in the back room of the vault here um, which is somewhere that I'm not usually allowed to be because this is where all the rare expensive wines um, are kept and Joey often bans me oh, from here it's, it's his domain in today. so in the in the special room today um, but yes uh, it's gonna be very very chill um, today um, Ask us any questions. Uh, come and say good day. Uh, first one, my actually. Mom's I've... watching. Hey, boy. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. Hi, Talita's mom. Uh, Mikey <laughs> says, "Yay, tell us a joke." So, if you could lead off with your best joke, please. Oh, I got no jokes. Wow. Sorry, I... I cannot tell jokes. Cannot tell jokes. Don't tell everyone. Okay, that. by by the time we're done with today, you'll be you'll be telling jokes. <laughs> um, but yes, guys, please. Um, and a big big good day to uh, to Danielle Wives, who's down in. Um, uh, sort of southern, southern central New South Wales, where they've got a bit of rain uh, in the last couple of weeks, which is excellent news. Um, very green looking um, place there as well. But um, what, are, what are we doing here tonight, apart from, from having a drink, apart from celebrating the reopening of, of hospitality around Sydney and, and I think Australia? I'm very happy, actually. So before we even talk about Lendrona, I just want to say good luck to everyone opening doors and thank you. Uh, of course, we're all very grateful. Uh, bars, restaurants, photo shops. I'm very happy that I can, uh, I can actually be here. I, I got to have dinner out on Sunday. I had plans of checking in on menus on Thursday and Sunday. And it's it's very exciting. It's really very exciting. So thank you very much for putting the effort, uh, for, for pivoting your entire business uh, in the past few weeks. And I'm pretty sure that you have to do it again in the coming months. So yes, yeah, so I'm definitely very grateful. On behalf of Brown Foreman of Glendronach, I uh, was very grateful. Yes, it's, it's going to be excellent and definitely get out and support everyone um, who have been doing it very tough in the past nine, ten weeks. But um, one thing, and I think you'll agree with this as well, Talita, is when you get into a venue and they ask you to scan a QR code or write your name down or do whatever, just do it. Be kind. When they be say, nice. go, go and sit over there, please, this is your seat, just sit where they tell you to sit. If they're going to do table service, let them do table service, let them do their thing. Um, if you make a booking... Show, show up. up or you have Please, me to answer with it do show up it is very this is very important if you make a booking do show up well now we're here of course to talk about Lindrona. we did have a couple of tastings in the past uh in the past few months uh, actually just prior uh all of this global change that we experienced right now and this is the very uh the very first time we're actually having an online tasting an e tasting uh with Lindrona today so you can see here that we have all of our our range lines around the table. Uh, we couldn't wait, so we just we just poured some for us earlier today, so uh, we can actually make sure that our vocal cords are, are, are good for this chat. And we're quite excited to share a couple of things. Yeah, and the best thing about putting this new little vault section together was we were able to sort of create a bit of a, a vibe at the back here, and there's some long lost memories as well that I think you were probably um, involved with, some way, shape, or form. Yeah, uh, there's some '95 single casks and. And that sort of thing, but um, I guess you know, Talita. First off, um, you know, you, you have become something of a um, you know regular presence in the Oak Barrel taste room, whether it's with you know Glendronic or Ben or Glen Glassow. And I know that we had some stuff planned for you know round about now with things we were going to do. Um, so there's some people out there, probably some Oak Barrel regulars, that have sort of you know a little bit out of the news cycle a little bit. What's what's happened with Glendronic and things in the past three months? Have we seen new stuff or yeah. what's how's the distillery going? 
Uh, well, so uh, when it comes to first oak barrel, we did have a couple of tastings over here. Uh, every uh, we have a new uh, cast collection of uh, of, of a beautiful uh, Glendaronic expressions that we bring to market every year. We had a the, the last release was on, in November, so we actually had a very good tasting here at Oak Barrel. Do you still have some left? No, no, no. no. I, <laughs> oh, got no I, well. I got boxes. I got boxes, empty boxes, plenty of them. <laughs> Yeah, so we we of course we always bring something uh, like a good new things. I would say that of course Glendrona 15 back revival. I find this name uh, very uh, well. It makes sense, right? Uh, it was revival before, it's revival now, and we really uh, we're really proud of this beautiful Glendrona 15 over here. If you have not tried it yet, uh, I would say that's a great place to start. Uh, Pedro Jimenez Oloroso. We're gonna talk all about flavor profile later. Uh, the Oak Barrels Whiskey of the Year for 2019 as well. Glen so, 15, I forgot about that. I, I, another little detail for you there. So uh, I think it's fair uh, for us to maybe start on the on the 12. I just like to share a, a couple of uh, just a couple of notes on each one of these whiskeys. Um, they're all for like all here lined up. This is our core range. So yeah, every year we do bring a beautiful uh, cast collection expression. Uh, we're always reinventing a few things, but Glen is all about sharing. So if you need to, to take with you three things today is that Glendronic is about sherry, of course, rich, robust sherry. It is meant to have a very long finish. So this is not just 12, the team, the cast collection. For us, long finish is a, is a big goal and every single step of the process is about delivering that flavor uh, to you. So uh, rich, sherry, robust, and of course, long finish so just take that with you and i'll be happy yeah no, a couple of questions like um obviously uh, you know some people who you know we're going to assume are quite big glendronic fans and there's been a couple of comments come through from people i know who are big glendronic fans but for people maybe just getting into the style and, and sort of getting into this sherry cask whiskies are something that were quite prominent in the 70s the 80s and, and the 90s um they're a little bit more uh difficult or not as not as prominent now because there's a lack of you know share physical sherry cast to put mm -hmm. the whiskey into a company like Glendronic that's you know reputation at stake its quality its its awards um, even the spirit it makes you know is built to go in sherry cast what sort of investment and in, like do you, like how do you work with the Dagas in Spain to actually ensure mm -hmm. that you are the one of the few distilleries that can maintain exclusive sherry maturations Look, uh, well, uh, 1826, right? This is when we came to life. So we're almost 200 years old now. Um, and we were doing sherry before sherry was cool. Uh, when uh, sherry was the way to go, right? We're talking 1826. So uh, sherry barrels, they were heavily used at that stage. Uh, so of course our relationships, they go they go way back. It's not like we're, we're just called a guy last week. It's been 200 years that we're doing this. That I think you said it very well that we perfected our spirit uh, to age in sherry so it's a highland robust spirit created to be aged in heavy sherry barrels not just sherry barrels but spanish oak sherry barrels um, of course the investment is really high we're talking about 800 pounds a piece right imagine you like each barrel each barrel cost us around 800 pounds and that's because we're really looking for quality we're talking about uh, sherry barrels that carry uh, that carry sherry for at least two years it's a minimum of two years and and this is our uh quality control check right there so how much a year a lot <laughs> so if you think yeah. it's one barrel uh 800 pounds i'll tell you it's a lot there's a there's a saying I used to I used to wheel out at tastings back in the early days when the oak barrel was doing a little bit of importing, and you, if you if you were a consumer and bought a bottle of whiskey or anything spirities from overseas and you had the tax you had to pay when it comes in the country that was okay that's a bit of a problem but I assure you that uh, you know your problem uh, the the importer's problem with tax is far bigger than yours it's an old Ice, um, Alfred Einstein quote if you're having problems with maths I promise you my problems are bigger. If you're having problems sourcing sherry cask whiskies in the cost, guaranteed when drunk having bigger problems. That is a lot of money that you're outweighing um, very early on in the process. Absolutely. And uh, I think it's just nice to mention that uh, this is a question that uh, we get a lot on the, on the bodegas. Of, uh, if we get that that one barrel that has been there for 100 years on that solid system, that's not really the barrel that we're looking for. 
Uh, so far, it's a, it's a, it's a different process, uh, but we have very good relationships in Andalusia. And of course, our, our brilliant master blender, master distiller, Rachel Berry, uh, is constantly, we travel, uh, it was constantly traveling yes. <laughs> back and forth to ensure that this relationship is there and stays strong uh, for us to remain delivering this uh, this beautiful liquid. Just want to say, I saw here that Alex mentioned before, Magnum, everyone. Yeah. Uh, yes, on Thursday, Alex, uh, come over. Let's do it. <laughs> I reckon I could sell Magnums of Glen John at 12. If you released Magnums, I could, I could get behind that. And there's a few people pointing it out here. <laughs> I know Jeffrey, Jeffrey Medina was needed to get a hands on that Glendronic 15 and Craig, um, uh, sorry, Chris Ting has just finished his, uh, his bottle of 12. So maybe the next bottle of 12 needs to be a magnum, um, of 12 and a bit of a shout out to, uh, to Gary, who's down in Tassie there. Um, he was quite happy about the tasting that Seamus did and Launceston last year. I, I believe that was, but, um, yeah, uh, might be an in joke from uh, young Alexandra Dahlenberg there about the use of magnums yeah. in, in booze, but I could, I could get behind <laughs> that, I think. Maybe it's something you need to raise up with Rachel and Douglas and Stewie next time you're over. Absolutely. Let's see, let's see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> well, so I, I, I can see here some names. I believe that most people know what Sherry is, but if you don't, I, I think it's just nice to it's just nice to mention because Glendron is all about Sherry and we say his word over and over again. So if you don't know, uh, Sherry is a port five wine. Uh, here at Glendronic, we work with Pedro Jimenez and we work with Oloroso. So Oloroso, if you never had it before, um, it's it's beautiful. It's very nutty-like. Uh, the way we, we produce is a, a palomino grapes. Am I saying mm -hmm. correctly here? So I'm in Spanish. <laughs> so palomino grapes uh, through an oxi um, oxidation process, of course. So the oxygen is there in the sense of we do fortify this wine quite early. So you have a very uh, a specific flavor profile that we're looking for. And the fact that you have this higher ABV actually keeps the barrel uh, fresher for longer. So it's a flavor profile, but also the fact that it's easier to, to travel with that barrel afterwards. Uh, and Pedro Jimenez, uh, we're talking here about Pedro Jimenez grapes. Uh, they are uh, a quite ripe grape that we leave it on the sun until it dries quite a lot before we actually produce the wine. So it's going to be a thicker wine. It's going to be quite sweet. Uh, so a whole different flavor profile. So think about dates and raising and while Oloroso is all about nuts. So those two barrels on top, of course, of the fact that it's all Spanish oak, this is what's going to deliver this, uh, this beautiful flavor. It's one of the, uh, of course, the things, one, one of the, the facts here that will add this beautiful flavor to this game. Yeah. A um, couple of big uh, comments here I'll catch up on here. A quick day to David and or Caroline Taylor, um, also down in Tassie. Um, and uh, Jeffrey Medina is a fan of Grant Sheeran. Love his insights. So there's a bit of the Grant Sheeran fan club uh, in the crowd at the moment, which is which is always um, good value. So um, I've been um, working here in this role in this sort of the whiskey role at the Oak Barrel for a little bit over five years now. Um, and one like one constant in that time, there haven't been many constants on our shelves in that time, has been Glendronic, 12 year old. You know, other releases, particularly the older ones, come and go on allocation as they, they come available and that sort of thing. Um, yeah, absolutely. To, to sort of maybe give like a bit of a you know, window behind the curtain without going too deep, like what are the pressures on um, not only a distillery but like an importer to keep, you know, a bottle like that on the market consistently? Because we, we see 10 or 12 yeah. years on a bottle, we go, 10 or 12 years. It's 10 or 12 it's years. 12 it's 12 years. years. I, I, I feel that way also when people ask me, how come you don't have any 18? How come oh, how come oh, you're shot in the 21? Because it it's takes a, it's a long time. 21 years. So like, if you're out, it takes 21 years to be ready again. <laughs> yeah, so, so how do you manage that? Like, um, Obviously, you're lucky that being a, a distillery with such a long history, there are stocks there. But you know, how, how do you manage that to, and to, to keep people like me happy? So this, this is the beautiful work of uh, it's probably the best job in the world. This is the beautiful work of people like Rachel Berry. So, uh, as a master blender, uh, she has uh, she has a few responsibilities, and one of them that we never actually think about administration side of uh, how much do I have, how much do I intend to deliver this year, next year, this year. Uh, it's not just tasting and looking good in photos, although this is a good part of the job. 
it's, 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 that's it's, it's numbers, really it's, well. it's spreadsheets and it's understanding volumes and production. And imagine you that uh, just for Glendorak alone, although we're talking about the roast and the cumin, is, uh, the facets of flavor that we have in each one of these barrels for you to get them together and deliver that flavor consistently because Glendronic has a lot of personality. I always say that Glendronic already has a voice before it even goes into the barrel. We have a very big spirit. It's very loud. It screams. Mm. It screams at you when you try it in your make. Uh, it's quite oily. Uh, it's quite thick. And that's due to our distillation process, to our, um, our fermentation process. So for you to get all of these flavor profiles and get together in a bottle over and over again and make sure that you have enough for 2020, 2021, 22, uh, and delivering that same flavor profile, um, it, it's not it's not up to me, but it's up to, of course, the beautiful work of people like Rachel and and she's incredible. She's sincerely incredible. And it's uh, that's why I have such a big admiration for this new Glendron 15 here. Uh, it delivers a very velvety Glendronach, which I didn't think was possible. Like the way she delivers flavors here uh, is still big, it's still Glendronach, but I would say that out of a, a it's, it's even, I would say that it's smoother, smoother, even than the 21 that sometimes I find it. It's big, but has a very rounded way of delivering sherry compared to 18, for example. So, um, absolutely, absolutely hats off to that lady. And a few people, of course, are just still working uh, along her side. It's, it's funny you raise that because throughout history, history, throughout the last sort of 10 years of myself drinking Glendron, I've reasonably seriously, I don't know if this is heresy, but the 12 was always my pick because just, you know, my personal taste in, in whiskey is often I like to taste a bit of malt. I like to taste a bit of that oomph, and the 12 always did that for me. Um, you know, the 21, maybe there was a bit of, I can't always afford this when I was 20 years old. Um, you know, they came into it a bit as well. Yeah. And like a pure <laughs> sherry drum is wet dream. Um, so, but like it was only up until last year when I, if I put them all, lined them up, I actually went actually you know, to 15. Is my my favorite just because I think that that velvety that old saying that it's a very smooth. Uh, yeah. it's, 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 you almost get that. Uh, you still get that date. You still get that calm. You get uh, all these flavors that you would expect to be there. Uh, like the strong citrus peel, but it delivers in a very smooth way, and uh, it's still that long finishing is there. What I like about it well, uh, and it's probably a whiskey that I that it, it is a it's probably one of my favorite Glendronachs as well. Uh, it's the fact that that new make spirit is it's it's really there. It's really there. So I think he, if you have one Glendronach to that, that express everything we do at the distillery, each process, you can taste each process in the 12. Uh, you can yeah. taste our fermentation. You can taste our distillation. You can taste the Pedro Jimenez, you can, uh, the Oloroso, and the blending, the art of getting that blending right. So it says everything about us, and that's why I have a yeah, absolutely. I definitely have this one over here uh, in my shelf you know, all the time. Uh, I, I, it's a must-have at home. Uh, and 18, I, I, it's no secret that it's probably one of my favorite favorite whiskeys of all times. Uh, it's that 18, which is uh, I would say very different. That that one is all oloroso, uh, and that guy is all. It's a ball. Of raisins and brambles, <laughs> and and that's it. And you gotta deal with it. And and each sip, uh, I'm on camera, so that let me, let me say this in a, yeah, in a nicer yeah. way. <laughs> G, G rate it, please. Yeah. G rate it. <laughs> but each sip delivers uh, delivers a flavor in a very unique way. And I always say that, and I I, I haven't I have, I have never actually lost this bet. I bet that in six months you will wake up and you think about it and you can still remember how it tastes. It's that memorable. It's that memorable. It just doesn't go away. It stays with you. That's how powerful this whiskey is. And that's that's what whiskey should be, right? You know, we were talking about the concept of let alone a 21 or an 18-year-old, a 12-year-old is a long time. They take a long time to make. If you're using something like sherry casks, you even can go back further. There's someone who's grown sherry grapes made sherry, put into barrel, it's been consumed, it's passed on. So you can always virtually double the age of that 12 year old, at least to say this, this is, you know, 25 really years in the making. I love so, intelligent call. yes. So, but like, but, but like, it's, it's not, it's something that you should think about, you know, when whiskey, 
Uh, and I think why you know a lot of people are, is um, having a bit of a fun with these virtual tastings. You should. I, I don't drink whiskey alone because the worst thing ever is to try a great whiskey and you look around for someone to tell them there's no one there. You know, bugger. And you've got a comment, and, yeah. and it changes. It's a, it's it a changes social over thing. time, isn't and it? And that's something you should keep discussing, and it, it should have that impact on you. I think that's you know, Glen Johnick since the very first one I I tried, and I think the first one I ever tried was a fifteen at a bar, and God knows which one it was about you know eight or nine years ago. But um, yeah, I think that's. It's got that impact, and particularly with sherry casks, and like other styles of casks have that influence as well. But it's just so immediate in sherry because that it's playing such a, a big role in it. Um, and actually, again, having the greatest job in the world, I can be you know miss some things sometimes. Rachel, you know, Be- yeah, Rachel and you, second, second best, best second best <laughs> um, is I don't often spend much time with the twelve. You know, because I, I feel like I know it. there's always something new to try. Do you feel so like it's fair to say that it's not even just the tw- I feel like there's a lot of, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about a whiskey that is not really on my portfolio now, but there's another 12-year-old that I haven't had in, in, I don't know, like in years. I don't know how many years. And then somebody else, like another Brendan Buster, was actually running a session, and I tried it. I'm talking about lymphatic. Yeah. <laughs> just said it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I was like, oh, I don't remember when was last time I actually had this whiskey. And it was delicious. I'm like, yeah. well, I don't think we spend enough time and I'm not trying to just, I'm not here trying to upsell Glendronic. I think Glendronic doesn't need me to do that. So, so. It just it just does it. So uh, but I find that sometimes going back to this car range, like um, our Benrick 10, our Lafroy 10, or, or that Glenfiddich, or, or going back to this car range, because I think we're very fortunate. We're always drinking new things. Yeah. It's nice to go back to it. And 100% it's right. And it's like to use a different analogy, you know, we should all try and go and spend some money in regional areas, in our home states and then around the country we're allowed to. Whenever I go to a new country town, I find the bakery and I'll have all these fancy things. I order a meat pie or a sausage roll first. If you can get that right, then I'll go on to your, your other stuff. Or if you're burger joint, I want your cheeseburger first. If you, can, if you can't nail a cheeseburger, why am I going to try your pasta. proper level thing? Yeah. Oh, you should never actually yeah. have pasta on a burger joint. Yeah. So <laughs> I think like a whiskey distillery, first and foremost, should be able to make, you know, the ultimate crowd pleaser, the one that is not necessarily, you know, you don't feel guilty drinking it or you need to wait for an occasion, just that the enjoyable whiskey, because they're often the ones that, you know, do, you know, inspire and enhance conversations and memories because they're the ones that are always on hand and always And it open. really tells the story of that distillery, isn't it? It really brings in everything they have to offer. Uh, I think it stands, I think it also brings a lot of their beliefs uh, or their, their, their character. You really still get uh, some of that new make profile. So I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, of keeping it simple. Of course, I love funky, funny, new, but, but going back to, and uh, well, I think that's the one of those. Yeah. Um, a good good point that um, was well, so a point that Hayden's making, um, Hayden Dare is in the chat here that I'm going to jump on a little bit, um, is that, you know, in, in the last sort of decade and a half, two decades of Glendronic, there has been a big drive for consistency because, you know, through the 80s and 90s, every whiskey distillery was, you know, trying to throw everything at anything to make it work. And now consistency is, is the key, particularly you know, for something like Glendronic 12, which you want to taste the same at the, you know, the bottle store and the bar and all that sort of thing. And I think that's, um, you know, I'm starting to see that come through in Glendronic more so than some of the other distilleries, um, you know, and potentially some of the bigger distilleries this as word, well. This word for, for Glendronic is in yeah. yeah. And so, like, with, with Rachel coming in and sort of stamping her mark on the, on the blending, have you had much insight into some of the methods she's using to try and, Right, so that Glendronic 12 this year and next year and the next 20 years yeah. is of the same quality? Look, um, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer this in a very broad way. Uh, the first time I've been, I, I actually, the um, first time I, I was lucky enough to be at the distillery, uh, it was before uh, was before Rachel's time. It was um, 2000, it was just before I moved to Sydney. I decided to get some of them, just get some time off, get a bank loan, sell my car, get a credit card, and I decided to live in Scotland. I was like, oh my God, that's so much money. I'll be here for months. Uh, two months later, yeah. <laughs> I was out of cash and I had to return to Australia. Uh, but it was a beautiful experience because uh, I was welcomed in many distilleries. Not just, uh, I wasn't working for Brown Foreman, so a lot of the distillers, they, they actually offered me even accommodation, and that's why I have so much respect uh, for this industry, because I had nothing to offer. Um, I had nothing to give, and yet um, I had beautiful dinners, I had more than tours and accommodation, and so, I, damn, I love that country, and I would move there in a heartbeat. 
so Glendronach was one of these places, right? So I, I got to see, um, of course, nobody told me the secrets of blending because nobody really tells you that, right? Especially like, oh, hey, I never saw you. Let me tell you all the secrets. Uh, but I got to see a little bit of what's going on on that stage, and I already I was already quite in love with this beautiful rainbow. And and then I got to be there again now with Rachel, working for the company. And then of course for that reason, uh, we got to really have a different day at the distillery and and a little bit of science I would say because uh, look, looking at some graphs and what it represents blending and flavors and. And it was a it was a very impressive experience both times. Uh, keeping Landrona consistent is not something that has necessarily happened throughout history, and uh, it's no secret. So I'm not going to avoid and say it. Uh, we know that uh, that's why the 15 got so famous. So every time people tell me the old 15 is so common, uh, but we we I say it. I heard Stuart Buchanan saying like, which old 15 you're talking about? Because yeah. Every single bottle of old 15 could have been its own old 15. So I don't really refer to old and new because they're completely different whiskeys. It's not even fair to compare them uh, with the 18. It's almost fair to say, saying that at some stage we were like, we didn't have enough stock and everybody spoke about it and the world spoke about it. Uh, so maybe it was a little bit different. The blend changed a little bit. Uh, and now with Rachel coming in, um, and that's what she's doing a beautiful job. And okay, what is it that we have? What is the flavor profile? And she has a, a palette of a goddess. <laughs> I clearly like her, don't I? <laughs> <laughs> but she tasted everything and she put her own, um, she, she definitely pivoted and changed the things when it comes to strategy uh, to make sure that we have it, uh, not just for this year, but for the years to come. And yes, to keep it consistent because, of course, next year I hope to have more of this beautiful Lindronic 18. Yeah, it's actually it's a really funny point that you, you brought up there um, when you were talking about the the periods of new and old, and um, you know it's it's not a, not a thing that is just unique to Glendronic. Every distillery is going. You go and try the Frog 10 from the 70s and the Frog 10 from today, and they're completely different. But um, the new and old thing, and I don't know if I've told you this story, but prior to my oak barrel um, days, I had a, a private, a private, my own whiskey company that I did on the side with my very good friend, and we collected Glendronachs. And to this day, I, well, I think we were had the biggest vertical Glendronach tasting Australia's ever seen. One afternoon, about twenty-eight Glendronachs, and a part of that was doing about three or four oh, different. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know you at the time. It was it was pretty good. Um, there's some photos up there somewhere hidden in a Dropbox, but. We tried three or four 15s um, throughout the different things. And what struck me about this one, the one that I awarded last year, um, it was the closest to, that I tried in ages to the old, old one. So the old, like oh. ni the 90s bottling so with, with like the cream, the cream yes. label. If I find a photo of it somewhere, <laughs> I agree. I'll click see if I can. And that is exactly the whole inspiration, you know. Yeah. That is like, not, no, no, it was, it was completely like, and I was like, I, where do I remember this call, from? You can call Stuart Bukana and have this chat later. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's exactly the whole point. And uh, I'm very glad that you picked that because like, you tasted it and you felt the same way. I should have. That, um, is, that is exactly the whole point. I sh should have been smart and the, uh, the actual actually, revival, the first revival. Yeah. In the in the old um, the old label, but um, I get Glendronic Extravaganza. Folder is empty, bugger. That's right. I'll have to go find that. Um, but I'll, I'll find that. I'll send them to you. But, but it was one that because I didn't know anyone at the distillery at the time, and we actually emailed them off. Um, I think it was probably Stuart or someone that, or Douglas, maybe that got back to us and said, "Hey, you should do it in the sword." Because you didn't have too many single casks. It was all like the the old sixteen year old silver platinum one, which is South Australian, uh, South American, sorry, South African um, exclusive. Um, the original Dark Vader, the black label for, mm -hmm. for Denmark, some older bottling, some newer ones, all the old tawny port things. So it was it was a bit of a bizarre Glendronach tasting, but I'll have to send you some photos. That's awesome. That. That's absolutely awesome. Um, question. We are now, obviously, things are starting to open up again. Um, and a lot of the still, like Australia's in, in quite a good position globally from, from what I can gather. The UK has still uh, got quite a you know strict lockdown and that sort of thing. A lot of distilleries around Scotland and the UK are, are closing or, or halting, you know, for lying their staff. You're going to ask me something about supply chain, right? No, no, I'm, well, <laughs> but, but, like that's, but, that, but that's not a thing potentially that is going to worry us until stops in 2020 are due to arrive. The whiskey is still sitting in barrels. The only thing potentially is maybe, you know, bottling lines are not as active as they were. So in terms of, you know, 
to what we're going to see in, in Australia for Glendronic? Is it pretty much business as she goes? Uh, look, with Glendronic, uh, it's always a lot of, and I, I, I got some people, I saw some people asking, oh, we don't have 18 anymore. There's no more 21. No, we have it. We do have whiskey. I got the 18. We do have whiskey, uh, but we do work and in almost, it has to work in a location because, but as you said earlier, it's a 21 year old whiskey. So it's not like I, it's just uh, this unlimited stock of 21 year old beautiful whiskey. We have an amount that comes to Australia and this amount uh, has to has to of course feed all the states all the beautiful places and bars and so it's a, a it, it can be challenging uh, uh, with everything that's happening in the world coronavirus etc everything that you just uh, mentioned of course it has an effect as well I saw the guys from I know there are guys from e-commerce and supply chain they had a, they had to work um, around the clock in the past few months it wasn't easy uh, globally uh, it, I would say even more. So uh, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, our, I was not there in the global office to see it, but just by the movement I got from here in Australia. Yeah, well, that's for sure is challenging for everyone. And as, as Seamus um, points out, Seamus, a colleague of um, of Talita's and good friend of the Oak Barrel, that's his stress know, problem. Exactly. So wait, it's just not our problem. It's <laughs> exactly. that, that's Seamus would deal with it. Seamus <laughs> could sort that one. So I was just saying, like e-commerce is like, yeah, yeah, it is. There are challenges, right? Yeah. So yeah, so I actually so I spoke with Seamus last week, and it's exactly what he said. Is like, mate. I'm busy. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I would say that there but are a few things to be adjusted. <laughs> it's there. It's 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 going to be all right. Um, which which I think is the is, is the main thing. And we certainly haven't seen um, not just from Glendronic and, and the Ben Rare company brands, but like across the board, stuff is still coming into the country. It might be taking slightly longer to get through customs, to get through the post to us, to get the post to other people. But it, it's there, and there's um, the whiskey's coming. Yeah, there's there's plenty, plenty plenty of plenty of whiskey. Um, <laughs> But if, if you have a baby in 2020 and you want to buy them a vintage bottle in 18 years, 21 years' time, that might be a bit of a problem. It might be a little bit harder to get. But um, we'll worry about that in a couple of decades Yeah. if we're still around doing it, this. It is. It is, absolutely. I always think about that too. Uh, we're very – I think you said something and uh, it made me appreciate whiskey even more. I always have this view, what you said earlier, of uh, I'm drinking whiskey, but I think about, well, 21 years, maybe the person that filled this barrel – I might not even be working with whiskey anymore. I might not even be here anymore. Uh, or imagine the actual who, who planted that bloody oak tree. Uh, how how did it happen? So uh, the whiskey is, a, is is the result of so many hands, so much passion, so much interaction. Uh, that I feel very uh, that there is something quite magical and romantic about it every time I'm drinking. Uh, but you also mentioned that we're very fortunate to be drinking whiskey at this time. Mm. At this time, and like this point in history, where we're really getting this whole industry change, we're getting what's the, what was happening before, what's happening now, and maybe maybe it will be quite different in in twenty yeah. years. Maybe they won't have the opportunity of facing all of this history that we get to face today. It, it is, and it's a really interesting point. And in, I'm I'm relatively new. I've been drinking whiskey seriously for about ten years. So in the in the grand scheme of things, I'm quite a new whiskey drinker and you do come across particularly in the early days of people going ah everything in the 80s and 90s was better and you know mm -hmm. nothing nothing these days sucks and it's like I was like how can that possibly be because in the 80s and 90s no one was drinking whiskey and access was hard no one like there was all your small importers are bringing into australia there was no big you know education no big access to it there was no like how many great whiskey bars do we now have that opened yesterday like baxter's was back open yesterday and you know rover will be you know very soon and like all these places it's like it's an incredible time for access to, to whiskey and anyone that sort of comes to me or sort of says oh you know i haven't tried a good whiskey in the past two years it was like well mate you either how are not trying hard possible? enough or you don't actually like whiskey because there's heaps of it around um, and it's like that. It like it doesn't make me angry, but it just makes me feel for people. Sometimes like how like sad that you can't feel happiness to look forward it's and not, see where it's, it's going. Really, that, that's not really a case of palate. It's a case of gratitude, right? Yeah. I just feel like it's someone much, like there. How many thousands expressions they came out, not just from whiskey, uh, Scotch Scotch whiskey, but here in Australia and in bloody brazil and yeah. all over the world like how many bottles how many expressions came out in the past six months past year uh, and this is just at this time like tell me the, 
there is not one single whiskey that is absolutely delicious. Yeah, and it's <laughs> it's it's incredible incredible time for 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 whiskey. And like, look at look at you know yourself in the role that you do. You're you're paid to be a brand ambassador to talk about whiskies of a few different shapes and sizes. Yeah. And and I probably should mention at this time a global icon of whiskey. Because uh, not only did you win <laughs> named the Australian icon October last year, but a few months ago you actually named the global icon of whiskey. So that's official icon of whiskey. I was really, I was, I was, I couldn't really celebrate that. I was like, oh, I went to London and oh my God, jazz and woo. And Lockdown. Then, oh. <laughs> so I don't know if it was like the best year because I was like, oh, I miss it all the party and all the fun stuff. <laughs> We're going to start the campaigning for you to do it again next year so you can um, go over there and really enjoy yeah, it. Or just, just, just invite me for the party. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to win anything. I just the party. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, and you know, um, I guess that's a, that's another good point is that you know, it's not only again we're talking about whiskey in general here and now. I think rather than Glendronach, but it often good whiskey feels good conversations and, and pushes it along the line sometimes. But just the community around whiskey, not only the people that that we get to work with in Sydney or in Australia or the international guests, but um, I've had times here where there've been you know Germans and uh, you know people from Japan and China who. We speak very, very little of the same language, and you're sort of doing the but hand signals. The job, isn't as soon as you put it, that in front of someone, they go, "Oh, okay." And there's, "Oh, yeah," and all of a sudden, you speak the same language. Couldn't couldn't speak Chinese. They can't speak English, but we can speak whiskey. But communication happens. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, I, and that's that's pretty like glass filled now, open bottle. Let's talk. You know, this this is something that um, I've been practicing gratitude a lot. I know that sounds funny, but um, is it is an exercise. I feel like sometimes our brain can can get caught on the uh, on negativity on uh, so much going on out there right now. So I'm here all smiles, but uh, of course I'm also following news all over the world and it's tense. And then you kind of feel lost and uh, and sometimes you're not sure about what you're doing and sometimes you don't know what you have is good and if uh, other people deserve it. It's full on. So lately, uh, to to get out of that mindset, I have been daily practicing moments of. Um, Look at my hands and touch the table and being grateful because I all my senses they work perfectly. Therefore, I can feel the table, I can feel this flavor, I can hear your voice, I can smell this room. Uh, very, very small things, right? And one of this, uh, in one of my practices, uh, might be a bit, <laughs> a bit too much for this for this chat, but I'm already sharing anyway. In one of them, I was actually thinking about the industry and the people in it. And it's something that we say because it sounds so beautiful, isn't it? Oh, yeah, whiskey people, I love them. And it sounds so good. Uh, but it, it's actually a real thing. You know, I feel like I have um, I have very good friends in a different way of being friends. I don't think we call each other every day, uh, but they're there when you need it. Um, there is there is something, it's a different energy. Uh, people are really outgoing, but also they're very open-minded. It's one of the things I love about this industry. That everyone is really open, really embracing each other's spirit. What was that uh, thought? Last year, the Whiskey Fair, Open Air Whiskey Fair, we're all sitting on stage trying leftover whiskeys from, from all Australian producers and all companies and sharing stories. And that moment was so powerful. Everybody was so open. And there was no criticizing. There was no such a thing as, your whiskey is shit. My whiskey is good. No. I, it's all about appreciation and gratitude. I maybe even if you don't like it, you're like, well, this is not for me, but I appreciate what you produced, what you put in this glass, and that's very unique to this industry. I feel uh, this, this is. respect. There's a lot of respect. Yeah, I haven't worked in in every industry. Obviously, that would be impossible. But I've worked in a few different industries, creative and otherwise. The one thing that strikes me about this one. Um, and I think it's quite unique to, to whiskey. You don't always see it in, in wine and beer and other things in that no one is fighting each other. Everyone in whiskey is looking for more whiskey, can, like more people to, to drink Absolutely. whiskey. There's no don't drink this, drink mine. It's when you finish that one, maybe have to try this one. Next time you're, you're out at a bar, look up, look up this one. Have you been to my bar? Make sure you go and try out that bar as well. That it's all about supporting yeah, everyone wants. the whole community. And and it's true because if you have another, a, a new whiskey drinker, this is good for everyone because uh, I adore Glendronach. It's one of my favorite whiskeys, as I said. Having said that, uh, I adore Glendronach. So I've been reacting my portfolio. But also I love a bunch of whiskeys that are not in my portfolio at all. And when I'm out, that doesn't mean I don't drink them. You know, I have a lot of respect for many distilleries. And just like, just like me, I know that, 
everyone that goes to Baxter's or goes to like Wild Rover, they're all trying seven whiskeys, uh, three whiskeys, ten whiskeys. Nobody goes out. Very rarely you go out and you drink one thing all night long. So it really is about uh, being one of the whiskeys you like. It's good enough. That's, that's all we want. We just want to be one of the whiskeys you like, We're not the only one. We're not here to bitch about brands, to, to, uh, to, to bad mouth anyone because it is a community and it's absolutely true. Yeah. I think uh, Mikey sums it up pretty well with his comment there, Mikey Lowe, with friends and dogs. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's a pretty pretty good summation of uh, what, it, what it's like to work in this game. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, it's something to, to drill down into in times, you know, of, you know, great upheaval and great disruption to what we assume for our normal lives is the fact how everyone has got around each other. And again, let's maybe expand this out a little bit bigger now with just like the hospitality community as a, as a, as a whole. Obviously, we see the Sydney one, but it's been happening down in Melbourne, like dinners for, for people who are out of work and, you know, happening all around the country in Adelaide as well. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty good, pretty good place to be. And I know I've, I've been feeling quite optimistic this maybe it's a direct correlation with bars opening for 10 people and then yeah. 50 people and just my like it, it lifts, my, my feeling getting better your, and better and better yeah, absolutely i'm feeling that too yeah. being able to have a, a whiskey with someone rather than you know Alone, just by uh, yourself uh, yeah uh, via like zoom or yeah, google, yeah. google hangouts yeah, google, uh, google zoom uh, google zoom uh, google hangouts and zoom and house part on that stuff it's been good but there's nothing quite like you know, go, oh, just give this a Being here, like, yeah, just being like here. smelling the aroma of, of lots of different things. Yeah, actually, actually, until Friday, I was meant to be in my. I was, I was going to be at home and just uh, connect it through whatever, and then do that like kind of a one yep. person in each room. So just the fact that I can be here at Oak Barrel today, I hope I don't get a fine on that loading zone. <laughs> yeah, no, it should be fine. <laughs> but yeah, it's good. So in this new little room, which we'll we'll, we'll do some work on, um, play with, but it's. The, the vault for those who haven't been to the Oak before is actually a temperature controlled um, wine cellar. Basically, if, if you could see that where there's lots of, you know, old and I rare like wines. And I can't get my coat as yeah, well. Yeah, I'm, I'm freezing. I'm from Western Sydney. It's way too cold <laughs> for me. But what it does mean is it's because it's controlled, we can, um, you know, we've got sanitizer, we, we've, you know, done everything. Joey and I will probably jump on for some late night shenanigans um, after this. We'll give everything a quick wipe down and, and do it all again. So, um, this, it just seems to work. Um, this sort of thing, and it's good that we sort of are able to offer this to, for these sorts of things moving forward. Um, I guess before we uh, wrap up and let you run off to all the bars, you're probably going to run off to um, everyone's plans sort of were, were put on hold. I know, you know, we've spoken about Whiskey Fair, but there's also Whiskey Show, Whiskey and Dreams, Whiskey Live, all, like all these big whiskey events. A lot of tastings were lined up for various important things. Um, your calendar moving forward, I've spoken to a few people involved with brands. Is it still pretty pretty fluid with what we're going to be seeing where Glendronic is going to be popping up um, in the next, well, six months, 12 months potentially? Well, it's very funny because um, it's hard to plan for the next 12 months. We have, we're guessing, uh, but what I, of course, just like everyone had to be with their strategy, we also had to do that internally. So I'm playing by the quarter. Uh, mm. I'm, I have a plan for the next three months. And that, of course, involves a lot of virtual tastings and um, I, still a lot of that activity online because some people, they don't feel comfortable. So we're still really driving this, uh, well, pretty much what I'm doing here. Uh, like we're still driving this type of activation. Uh, when, the, when the time comes, if we can drive bigger events in a safe manner, because it's all about safety, isn't it? Like, yeah. So 50 people, can we, can we not? So we're, we also playing by the year, like everyone else out there. So we'll see, right? Like we're yeah. still busy. We still have a lot to do, uh, but we're definitely revisiting plans and, and some stuff that would, that was meant to be happening now. We're trying on the next quarter uh, and, and, and so on. We'll see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. And I mean, guys, all, all the, all the juice is in, is in the country right now, pretty much in terms of what we've got presented here. Um, I know personally I have um, the uh, 18. the 18 and the 12 and the Granger uh, on the shelf at the moment and a little bit of a secret between between you and I, so to maybe close your ears. Um, every every year you do have a thing called CPI and the tax goes up slightly and so every bottle of whiskey has to climb, you know, a little bit, every bottle of spirits I should say. I haven't actually factored that one into our costings yet on the 12 and the 18. So when the boss finds out, I'm probably going to have to sneak it up by five or ten bucks. But for the moment, <laughs> um, I'm trying to get away with it um, by by doing that. But um, 
Uh, so in other words, good time to buy whiskey. Yeah, good, good, good time to grab it now before I have, I'm forced to push it up by the um, <laughs> by when, when it becomes basically rent week. We got to pay rent. So, oh yeah, got to maybe make a little it's bit more. Time. Yeah, do that. <laughs> but um, uh, big thank you to everyone who threw questions into um, Jeffrey Medina says awesome stream. I think he's pretty much talking to you rather than me um, because I think people are sick of my face on the Oak Barrel streams uh, by now. Um, but thank you everyone on Facebook and on on YouTube and basically tell it if you want to sort of address the uh, your oak barrel faithful um no I, until look, the next I, I really appreciate it because i see here that people commenting and i was uh, oh, I, I i actually was my very first time doing this uh, training here bugger the boss is listening damn it oh now delete, it's, uh, delete, 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 delete. Yeah, sorry, sorry guys now i'm putting it up by five bucks a bottle now it's too late sorry he's found out there you go <laughs> well oh, damn oh, yeah. well. Well, appreciate that everyone is here i uh, will be here again next week uh, i'll get to do this again uh, with Ben Rhea, ben Rhea, which is another beautiful brand. Um, I won't be driving because uh, I don't want to do deal with that loading zone again. And uh, I've already so chosen the whiskey we're going to drink at that one. Ooh, and it's, nice. Because I've already got it open. It's uh, a hint. It's hand sanitizer strength. So <laughs> a that, hint that's, uh, is incredible. <laughs> yeah. So so you've got car strength, natural car strength. At about as of 2020, I'm officially mm -hmm. anything over 60 percent is hand sanitizer strength. Um, so that might give you a uh, Bit of a hint onto what that one know, is. What's going to happen yeah. next week? I oh, appreciate all the attention. I appreciate uh, sharing this moment here tonight. I appreciate giving us a reason to well, to wash my hair. I'm so I keep I keep looking at the camera because I forgot how beautiful it looks when I <laughs> when I want to actually do something about it. I'm like, oh my god, stop it! I should probably shower every day. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't wash my hair. Um, all right, and all right. I, well, thank you, Scott, for having me. Oh, that's a pleasure. Me. Pleasure. Um, it's good to have some company. <laughs> Please make sure you check the bars safely, follow their guidelines, and show up to your bookings. Please do show yeah. up. <laughs> do as you're told. And if your friends aren't doing as they're told, you make them do as they're told. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Um, we will be back next week to have a bit of a chat about Ben React, which is going to be fun. Thank you, mate. Appreciate you coming down.